it carries this character the whole way through. She has this burning desire for justice and to really start to unpack the the fractured layers of herself. Um, And it's healing. I love watching her evolution. I hate to say I enjoyed this show because it is quite dark, <laughs> but at the same time, the show is really an important story to tell and and one that is told very well. And so uh, I'll start with Teresa and then Miranda. Uh, were you familiar with the novel and sort of the, you know, the, the source inspiration behind the story prior, or was this kind of your first real exposure to this whole concept? I did not read the book and I was not familiar with it. I had heard of uh, J.P. Pomare as an author, and I knew he was doing great things in Australia. Um, But I read the script, and that was the first time I was immersed in this world. I've always been fascinated by cults, and I've researched many cults um, before. I've watched all the documentaries. I've listened to the podcast. So, of course, I'm immersed in this world that is completely captivating and riveting. And as the, the story was unfolding, it was one twist after another. And I was just absolutely hook, line and sinker. I was in. This is a project I wanted to do. I hadn't read the book. No, I I wasn't aware of it. But then I found out that it had been quite a hit and quite a bidding war to, to get the book. I was really just coming to it from the script very much. And like Teresa, I'm a huge... Um, obsessive, um, have a huge obsessive interest in in cults, and um, so I've I've watched a lot of stuff and read a lot of stuff over the years. So it really, very much tapped into my wheelhouse. And the scripts were just so great and clever and intricate and layered. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just I was I was totally in. Now, both of your characters in particular are really fascinating ones to explore as they go on. Uh, Teresa, especially yourself, given the the dual timeline nature of this show, what was it like for you really, you know, trying to find that balance between someone that audiences can relate to and want to empathize with, as well as one who has such a darkness in her past? Yeah, I... um... I really fell in love with Freya as a character because she's so um there's such humanity about her. She she's so many colors. She's not just a victim. She's also a she's a survivor and she has so many wonderful qualities. She has this beautiful, affectionate, playful side with her son. And she is trying to pick up the pieces of her shattered life and move forward in the very best way that she can. And I um I loved her bravery. I thought it was so interesting. And then of course, as you know, Miranda said, this is a story of redemption. And that's what really drove me as a performer. And it carries this character the whole way through. She has this burning desire for justice and to really start to unpack the the fractured layers of herself. Um, and it's healing. I love watching her evolution. It's definitely been, from what I've seen so far, a very moving one uh, and and one I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of. And then, Miranda, coming back to you, your character is almost the antithesis to where Freya is as an adult. And, uh, you know, I'm curious what that's like for you having to, you know, really plumb the depths of someone who really believes in her cause, even if it is one that might be a little bit maligned. What is that like for you, you know, going to those depths? Yeah, like it it was a really interesting experience in that way because you kind of bring certain judgments to it at first and certain ideas of how you think it is and then it kind of Adrian kind of revealed herself in in more and more ways and as we go on through the series you get to know more about her and and a little bit more of her backstory and I she's such a it's it's almost like at times it was almost like playing someone who wasn't a human being in some way and then trying to find ways to humanize her it, it was such a strange process um yeah hard to hard to kind of put it into words really i can only imagine well you do it a phenomenal job on the screen so at least you put yeah. it together for yourself 
Um, and then uh, as a fan of both of your works, I find it so interesting that this also gives you the chance to go back home in a sense and, and film in your native country of Australia and, and, and use your natural accents. What was that like for both of you, especially since you've both been a part of so many American productions in the past few years and using a, a, a boring accent like my own? <laughs> no, oh, my gosh. Um, it's liberating, I have to say, to um, not have to be worried about the accent um you know on you know shows and films when we're playing american or other other um you know from other countries you have a dialect coach so there's always someone there like trying to help you with the accent but in this way when you're in your natural dialect i feel personally that i have so much more freedom with my voice and you there's you're not like in a box of how something has to sound. So I love that aspect of it. And then on just on the side, just going back home and being in Australia and working with crew members that you've worked with before and just being in the home turf, there's something so like familiar about it that um, I always feel very held when I'm on a, an Australian production. So I love going back home to work. Yeah, I went back for a couple of years during the pandemic and started to work a little bit more back in Australia, which was it was so nice. And so many of the things that I've worked on there have been, you know, stories about things that that I've known about. Like I did a show that was about the bushfires and it it's just it's really nice to to go back to the source in in that way. It's been really nice to to go back and tell some Australian stories. Well, even though it's something as dark as this, I'm glad that you both have the opportunity to to get that sense of comfort from home. Um, before I let you both go, Teresa, I did want to come back to you and ask, uh, aside from the show, uh, I was a big fan of I Am Number 4 when it first came out. Yeah. And still am to this day. Uh, oh. And unfortunately, we never got that sequel. But I, I know. And I mean, it's but it's gotten a cult following in the years since. And so I, I'm curious what that's like for you to you know the to reflect on that process, to see the cult following today and to even see calls for uh, more of six in the future. Oh, the power of six. That was the next one oh. in the series. I know, you know, this has happened to me a few times in my career where you sign on for three projects and you're like, oh my gosh, it's going to be a trilogy. And you get so excited and you get really connected with the cast. And it was really disappointing when we found out they were not doing a sequel. Um, so there's a bit of sweet quality to it for me when I look back I'm like oh what a wonderful experience and I got to do so much stunt work and work with you know DJ Caruso the amazing director and flip around and have fun and what a cool character ride a Ducati motorbike so much um but unfortunately it never ended up you know, coming to a second a second movie. And that still pains me. And I meet people like you who are like, we love the movie. Um, so I'm I'm disappointed. But look, who never say never. I would be down. <laughs> we could get the rights back. We could do it ourselves, like guerrilla style, make power of six. That'd be awesome. That would be awesome indeed. And uh, <laughs> I'm definitely going to keep my fingers crossed for you on that one. But oh. in the meantime, I really look forward to spreading the word about this show. It's a very important story to tell, great performances and great characters. So thank you both so much for taking the time to thank chat. You. Greatly oh, appreciate really it. appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a good rest of your weeks. Yeah, thank you, you too.